Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about onboarding in the modern workplace. So the whole process of someone being hired, maybe even a little bit before, all the way through them being integrated onto your team. So this is actually a small section of our Make Others Successful podcast. Uh, we took a small clip from that. So if you want to listen to the whole conversation, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Otherwise, let's hear from Matt Dressel and Mike Bodell on onboarding. So let's talk a little bit about some of the problems that we see out there with onboarding, and we can talk a little bit about some of the challenges that we've had or some of the problems that we've seen um, in other organizations that we work with. Yeah. So um, one of the big things that a lot of like, so a lot of people will say, you know, I have a good, effective onboarding process. Um, chances are what they really have figured out is the intake and the administrat administrative tasks, right? So they have probably have a really good process for, I have a new person, they go to this site or this or fill out this form, that gets them signed up for payroll and for you know their 401k and all these things and, and that gets them going, right? Um, and it's largely an HR responsibility. But the truth of the matter is, that's pretty much all that 50% of the organizations do. That's on, the only piece of it. And what they're really missing out on is that next piece, which is the culture, the involvement, that's largely left up to you know, a manager and for what they think is important to make that happen. Well, and more often than not, we see that that initial process is usually a paper process, right? You, <laughs> yeah. You sit down with true. a manila folder or a clipboard full of forms that you have to fill out as an employee and then somebody processes that and gets it into the payroll system or wherever it needs to go. Yeah. That's definitely how, what you were doing when we started, right? Yep, that's, that, that's <laughs> definitely how we started. And now, you know, we don't manage that paper at all, um, which is less of a security risk. Like there's all kinds of benefits to, to that. For sure. So another thing that um, uh, I would say that is challenging that a lot of organizations really have a challenge with is that um, it's truly that beyond that first week or that first couple days when they're filling out those forms, the other side of it, that side that goes beyond that is really about the engagement of the employee with the organization, right? And finding the ways to get them to be, um, you know, it might be a bad way to say it, but indoctrinated in your culture, right? Um, both from a, this is what the business does, but then this is who your team is. This is where your team fits. This is what you're going to be doing. This is how, um, you are going to be interacting with other people within the organization. Well, I remember from, you know, some of the jobs that I've had where I landed there, knew virtually nobody on the team except for the hiring manager, right? Yeah. It can be very intimidating. Um, you get thrown into something, maybe you're, you don't know if you can accomplish the task well, you don't know anybody, right? So that type of thing that you're talking about helps uh, to, you know, build relationships not only with the managers that you're dealing with, but maybe with some other team members as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about like, what are those things that we can do better that we see that can be done better uh, to help in, uh, with those things? Yeah, sure. So one of the things that you can do um, that, so there's a couple different things. Well, I'll break it out in a couple different ways. So probably a big area that is really challenging to solve, but if you can do it effectively can have a big impact, especially for organizations that have employees that, you know, don't start for two day, two weeks, three weeks, maybe even a month out, right? So in those types of scenarios, that's a lot of time from when they accept the offer to when they actually start and then can get access to a lot of the other data and information that they might have. Um, so one way to solve that is to provide updates and information throughout that whole process about your culture, about where you're going. Um, and obviously that can be a challenge, you know, how do you... They don't have an account. They don't have a computer. They don't have, you know, these other things that might require that may, they might need to be able to get some of that information. But there are ways to get around that. Um, so that's one thing is like start before the first day. Like don't wait. So, um, so little cultural drips. Yeah. Right. Right. Like maybe maybe pointing them to the to the, your if, if you have your public website, maybe pointing them to your public website with some information, maybe providing them some of the some documentation about, hey, this is how your first day is going to go. This is how the first week's going to go. Um, so that, that's part of it. And that leads into the second thing, which is have a checklist, right? HR likely will have a checklist no matter what, but it's likely just limited to those HR functions, right? Have one that you could have all your hiring managers have that say, this is what we do, right? You need to, you know, let's say, take them out for lunch on the first day, right? You need to, 
you know, meet with them one-on-one -on -one by, you know, maybe the fourth day that they're, they're, they're with you, right? Like whatever, whatever those things are that you want to do as your organization, have a checklist, make sure everybody knows about what that is, that that's the minimum, right? This is what we do as an organization. That's the minimum that we should be doing. Sure. Things like, uh, pair them with a buddy. Yeah, right? for sure. A mentor. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so that's one, that's, that's another thing. Um, another thing that is you can do to kind of improve it is to really empower the employee, the new employee to learn and guide themselves. So a lot of the ch ch times, part of the problem is I show up on the first day and it's like, who do I ask for help? Well, then if I have to go ask Mike, let's say for help all the time, I'm going to feel not so great as an employee. Like I have to go ask him for this thing. Like I'm interrupting his day. They're doing this thing, which ties into the mentor thing you mentioned before, or the or the guide uh, conversation. So, number one, authorizing someone to actually go talk to you, someone, and interrupt their day. But then the second is provide resources that they can go figure stuff out themselves. Right? Document things that are important to them, uh, important to new employees, um, so that they can go get those things from a, a resource perspective. Things like where do I submit my timesheet or mm -hmm. how do I check out a tool if I need it? Right. Let's say yeah. I'm, in, I'm in the trades business some, yeah. somewhere, right? Um, those types of things, giving somebody the ability to just look at what that process is and give them the, the pointers on where to go to do that, yeah. as opposed to feeling uncomfortable asking somebody the question, right? Yeah. Give them that power. Um, I think in a lot of ways doing that and giving them that knowledge uh, will help them fit into the team more quickly, right? Cause they'll just, feel like they know it. Yeah. And they can also talk with people in a equal kind of manner. So when they're asking about vacation or a holiday or a, uh, uh, the new, you know, quarterly meeting that you guys have, right. They're going to talk and know, know something about it and not be like, what's that meeting? I didn't like, I just saw, heard about that from here. I don't know what that means. Right. Um, so it really provides an equal footing so they can start talking about things as equals rather than I'm just asking in here to just get information and I don't know anything. So one thing we haven't talked about is how do you do all of that stuff? Like, what do you do? Um, and obviously we're a tech company, like we do Office 365 stuff. Um, and I think there is, uh, there's a number of ways that technology can help. Um, probably the most obvious one is automating uh, forms and filling out the forms, et cetera. We're not gonna talk too much about that. There's a bunch of solutions out there um, that'll allow you to do that. Um, but that's not something that we necessarily have a, a good insight into, you know, the best tools for that. Because honestly, for us, even in, internally, we're still doing it. It is all paperless, but it is fairly manual, right? We're sending out individual forms. Um, but I will talk about a couple other things. One would be the pre-boarding concept that we talked about before, which is that from the time that they accept an offer to when they actually have their first day. Um, and that is something that you can do some things with, right? Develop a portal, uh, a dedicated portal. It could be, you know, either a, a website that's secured with the password. It could be a SharePoint site with external guest users. If you're using Office 365, like we're most common, commonly familiar with. Um, but basically, you know, they they sign they sign in, and now they have an access to a portal that gives them maybe, you know, what's our core values? Who's the leadership team? What does your first day look like? Um, what's the benefits look like? Maybe it has frequently asked questions, right? So you're not giving them everything that the new employee would need, but at least something that they can go out to. And even if you don't, um, so another challenge is a lot of new employees may just want to deal with email and that's okay, right? Um, but then from an HR perspective, now when I send an email out responding to a question, I provide a link back to that portal, right? And now they go to the portal and I say, oh, cool, I got the information I needed. But then I also have these other links to other resources that I can get access to. Um, so I think that's, that's one thing where technology can help. Um, another thing is like, it's the same concept, but it's post first day. So an onboarding portal. Um, and so this is really that same concept, only a much broader amount of information because now they are an employee, they have a computer, they have an account, um, they're working with people. Um, and so maybe it includes the checklist that they can expect to be going through in the first week or the first month. Maybe it has some additional content about, you know, some of the other process we talked about vacation and this type of thing. Right. So help me understand this a little bit more. Um, are we saying that we could have a couple portals here? A pre-boarding portal would be a place where somebody could go learn about our, our culture, uh, learn about some of our processes. Maybe it's a place they could actually fill out those forms that HR needs Perhaps, and they could yeah. be submitted and that process could get rolling in yep. that two Before, weeks prior to their joining. Yep. Yeah. And the onboarding portal is something that 
helps them get to know the organization at an even deeper level, maybe gives them training resources. Um, like now that they're on the inside, right? They have access to things. We can give them more of that information. Is that kind of what yeah, we're saying? Yeah, for sure. Like, so the checklist in, in that example, maybe it has direct links to, if you have a learning management system, maybe it has direct links into courses in the learning management system. Like we recommend going through these things, right? Like maybe there's a, maybe there's a communications uh, training that they really need to do. And maybe there's a, um, you know, a, uh, harassment training that's pretty common thing for, for HR departments to want. Um, so maybe it has direct things right from there. And they don't have to, on their first day, they don't have to wait for an email from their manager saying, hey, you should go do this. They say, oh, this I'm going to do all this stuff. I'm going get, get to a, get a start on that now, um, even though nobody's really necessarily asked me to do it yet. All right, guys, that's all we have for today. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Subscribe if you want more similar content. And if you want to, again, listen to the rest of the conversation, be sure to check out the link in the description. You'll find the full conversation there along with a couple other podcast episodes for you to listen to. If you want to learn more about the modern workplace, be sure to check out our learning center where we have a bunch of content, blogs, videos, etc., all categorized on our website according to different topics that you might want to learn about as well as tools in the Microsoft 365 suite. So we'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Have a good day.